everyone, and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Still Washington Wine Month, August. We have a few more, about another week of August, and then uh, we're off into uh, September. Uh, but I wanted to continue on with Washington State wines, and I, I picked these two wineries in particular because, for one special reason, um, one of them started in 2010, and the other one started in 04, but now they have the current winemaker who started in 2010. So they have a, a lot of things in common. One's a smaller production. The other one is not huge, but a lot bigger than the other one. And uh, very interesting uh, backgrounds for both of these guys and how they got started um, and where they're going now with their wines. The first one we're going to try, well, before I get started, I was going to mention first off, um, but I think I mentioned this before, we had a great tasting with Chris Sparkman. Uh, two of these are his wines, a very interesting guy, and how he got started and all that. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But I want to get started because we're doing four wines now, and I want to make sure that I don't stretch this out too long. The first one is the Sparkman Cellars Lumiere Chardonnay. 2014 Columbia Valley. This rolls in at $30. So Chris Bartman was in the restaurant business for a long time, worked in some really nice restaurants. He was a sommelier. sommelier. Um, he uh, was a wine buyer for these restaurants. He ended up up in El Gaucho. <laughs> in Seattle, a lot of you are probably familiar with that restaurant, and he ran into Charles Smith, and he was thinking about buying, starting a wine shop in Seattle so he could spend more time with his family, because when you're in the restaurant business, you work a lot of nights, and he had a, you know, he was starting a family, wanted to spend more time with his kids, his wife, so when he met up with Charles, Charles said, why don't you start a winery? Well, make a long story short, he did, and now he has a very um, cool winery, with a lot of great wines, he gets really good press. Um, he was named like in the top 100 wine, wineries in Washington State, I believe, or top 10, something like that. He gets a lot of good press for his wines. His wines are, uh, the ones I've tasted have been excellent, um, very well made. And Sparkman, uh, Chris Sparkman started out with his family and then in 2010, they hired Lynn Scott, who's now the current winemaker, and in 2010, actually, they were considered one of the rising star wineries of the state of Washington. And I thought it'd be cool to do some smaller wineries. Uh, you know, Chris produces a lot more than Kevin White, but still in the overall scheme of things to the Chateau St. Michel's of the world, the Precept wineries of the world, um, uh, both Spartan and Kevin White are smaller wineries. Um, but it's just that generation that kind of came up and decided to start doing things in the Washington wine world and really um, shot up and did well with their wines. So let's see what we get on the nose with the Chardonnay. So very light oak, you get a little bit of oak on it. I get a little pears and peaches, like really ripe peaches and, and lighter pear notes. As I go do a little golfing, they wearing the golf shirt, never got out there. That's the way, busy, doing lots of stuff. It's just a very, very light nose. You can tell the wine's a little bit cold. And again, I, uh, I'll just say this over and over and over again. I review wines the way I think most of you drink them. And I know there's a few of you out there, and I, I'm, I'm with you on this. Drink your whites a little bit on the, not warm, but not cold either, and you get a little bit more out of them. But unfortunately, especially if the weather is beautiful as it is, people like their whites to be a little bit cold. I understand that, that's okay. That's okay. So I taste them like that. And I think that's a fair way to do it for when, when I'm reviewing wines because you're gonna taste the same thing I'm tasting right now. All right, let's see what we get on the palate. The oak is there, but it's not over the top. It's nicely um, um, built into the wine so that the fruit comes through. You get that, those pear notes, 
A little bit of a, I get that peach note coming through too. This chart is nicely done. I think it, it, it strikes a nice balance for those people who like heavy on the oak and those who don't like as much oak. It will not work for you if you like un oak Chardonnay. This is not your style at all. But for what it is, it's really good. We call this, I would call this a Burgundian style Chard with a little bit of that new world oak on it. And um, what I like about it, it has good balance, a little bit of spicy characteristics on the backside. You get a little bit of white pepper but it really, it does express the Chardonnay fruit uh, correctly, and it's not over the top, like I said, not over the top oak. I think it's nicely balanced. Got my really cool spit bucket at Susie's house. She lets me use it for shooting videos occasionally. I appreciate that, and I love the cool spit bucket to use with that. Um, this Chardonnay is, uh, shows good balance, um, well integrated, um, it's not herky-jerky, there's nicely blended, a little bit of spiciness on the back end. I'm going to go B plus, A minus on that. Uh, Chardonnay, let's move on. Good job. 2015, Birdie Riesling from Sparkman Cellars, Columbia Valley. Oh, did I mention the price of the Chardonnay? $30. This rolls in at $18. Nice clean labels. I like that. Uh, we were talking, I talked with some of my friends about labeling and how people don't put a lot of thought into it. I think it's important. Um, you have to think about how it will show on the retail shelf. Uh, will it attract people or, you know, what are you, what are you shooting for? This is a good label. This is a nice, clean, well done label. Uh, Sparkman Birdie Riesling uh, was number seven best wine and wine and spirits or one of those magazines last year I believe uh, sold out right away I've always been a fan of uh, Sparkman's Riesling let's see what we get on the nose so what I like about this is you get those um, peaches apricots but you get a little bit of that petrol that rubber boot action coming through Even getting a little bit of ripe pineapple. Very nice aromatics on this Riesling. Uh, in particular, for you Riesling geeks out there that really get into that, that petrol, that rubber boot thing, is a big deal. It really is. You look for that in Riesling. I think it's funny when I mention that rubber boot thing. And, you know, a lot of people just, you know, they don't really, they're not looking for that. It's okay. You don't, you're not into reviewing wines, you're not into taking notes, you're into doing all that stuff. Uh, but for us, for those who really are into Riesling, it's just one of those things, and you'll understand it if you ever get excited about Riesling, if you ever get into it. Um, it's, it's funny to me that most guys that are, or women, men, whatever, are really into wine like Riesling. And I know a lot of you always think sweet with Riesling, and that's not always the case. Riesling can, can be bone dry too. So it, it isn't always a sweet thing. And Riesling is very, very uh, compatible with food. Let's see what we get on the palate. Wow, love, I love that, um, the peaches, the apricots that come through on the back side of this. It's beautiful. It's really a beautiful reason, but it's dry. And that's a cool thing. You get the, the essence of the fruit, but not the sweetness of the fruit. Good acidity, not laser sharp. I mean, I, you know, a lot of times I prefer reasons that cut your tongue, but this one doesn't, but it still has good acidity, nice balance, very clean, very fresh. And that rubber boot action comes through, but in nice balance. So it won't throw a lot of people off. I mean, if you taste one of those really heavy petrol reasons from Alsace or from Germany or, you know, even, even from the state of Washington, you'll, a lot, some of you will be thrown off by that. But this has a nice balance. It 
it's a beauty. It really is. It really is a very well-made Riesling. Exactly what a lot of you are looking for that don't want sweet Riesling, but it still has that good fruit. And that's always hard to explain to people. I don't know always how to do it. I try. It has the flavors of apricots and peaches, but it doesn't have the sweetness. But there's a, just a hair of sweetness there, just enough to really make your mouth water. And I like that in a wine. I particularly like that in a Riesling. Um, this is a great, this would be great with shellfish. I'm just telling you right now, this would be a killer wine with oysters, with clams, that sort of thing. Um, with any sort of a white fish, it would be beautiful. Um, very versatile in what it can go with. And, uh, but it's not sweet enough to really go with Asian food. And that's, a lot of Riesling is good with Asian food because it's very spicy, a little bit of heat. So the sweetness of the Riesling, not sure how this would go. I'd like to do an episode on that. Sometimes that's what I could be doing. Um, if you want to give me some ideas, this is episode 296. In four episodes, I'll be on, after this one, I'll be on episode 300. And I kind of want to do something special for episode 300. Maybe you could throw some ideas. Make some comments, please. Um, give me some ideas of what you'd like to see for episode 300. I don't think I can get my buddy Mike Sheridan in on it because uh, he uh, he's still in the heat of the summer. He has uh, Mike's uh, Cafe and Wine Bar. And uh, so I don't think I can get him. But if I get some ideas from you, that'd be great. I'm going to go... Um, I'm gonna to have to go A on this Riesling. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm squeaking towards A plus. Well-made Riesling. Good job, Lynn Scott and Chris Spartner. Let's move on. So this is the 2014 Kevin White Winery, the Fraternite Red Wine. Oh wait, I know. Yes, I'll do this one first. This is, um, now this is really cool. Shout out to Kevin White. Now, I tried to look this up before this episode. I believe Kevin White was might have been in Boeing, I'm not sure, but he got interested in wine. He started this winery in 2010. He currently produces about 850 cases with the goal of going to 1,200 cases. Very small winery, but right at first release, Kevin White caught people's attention with his wines. And he only does the two. He only does the two wines, which is very impressive that he does that. At least those are the only two that I'm familiar with. Now, I didn't look into his website deeply. These are the only two I, let's put it this way. These are the only two I've ever been able to get my hands on. So I don't know if he does anything for his wine club or not. This is, once again, shout out to Kevin White for putting this on his label. And I would encourage all wineries to put at least what's in your wine on your label. This is 80% uh, or 60% Grenache, 32% Morvedra, and 8% Syrah. So this is what is a GSM blend, or this is a GMS blend. GSM blend, blend you might have heard that phrase um, uh, thrown around in the wine world. GSM means Grenache Syrah Movedra. Very popular blend, in particular in Washington, because they do all of those varietals so well. Let's see what we get on. Oh, better give a close-up to the label. Again, a very clean, very nice label. I'm a label guy. I think it's very important to do the right kind of label. Okay. By the way, if you want to make a comment, how do you feel about the labels? Think it matters? How important is it to you that the label be good? Like, I think these are good labels. Do you think these are good labels? I don't know. I'd like to hear what you think. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a very smoky nose right off the bat get a little bit of plums a little perfume action going on get a little bit of a like a violets and rose petals but mostly like plums a little bit of dark cherries and boysenberries let's see what we get on the palate Two thousand fourteen was a great vintage across the board. Every Pinot Noir from Oregon I've tasted from fourteen, spot on. I expect this to be good. It's a two thousand fourteen. I've always been impressed with his wines. I think they're really good, and um, 
this is fairly fruit forward and this is something that I don't often see in his wines but this has a lot of fruit. I get a lot of uh, uh, dark cherries, plums, a little bit of spice action from the Grenache. Oh, my sister just walked in, came back from work. A um, little bit of smokiness coming through, a little bit of tobacco. And I like the red flowers. It's fairly light bodied wine. Um, the red flowers are nice. This is an interesting wine. I, I, this is one of those wines where I think a lot of you are going to like it. Um, I didn't mention the price. He's rolling at 28 bucks. He's been 28 bucks for the last three years. He's been holding out that price, which I'm happy about. Um, this has got enough fruit on it to keep a lot of people interested, especially those who like, you know, some of the California uh, wines with a little bit of love handles on them. Um, fairly light body though. I mean, this is like you almost could chill this a little bit and, and drink it. It's that light on the palate. There's some interesting characteristics to this. I can feel some layers in there. I can feel through some things that might start coming out as it airs out. Um, now I'm getting more spice on it. I'm getting a lot more spice action. Probably haven't had it open long enough. I see the potential right off the bat. The fruit is there. Uh, very smooth wine with a little bit of spice action. Again, very light body, but very complex. don't know what to think about this wine right off the bat. I'm really not positive what to think about this wine. I think to be fair, at 28 bucks for what you're getting, I would go B minus. Um, it's definitely got potential. Uh, it has some things that a lot of people are gonna like, but I don't think I can go above B minus on that um, for, the, for the money. Let's move on. Kevin White Winery, En Hommage, 2014 Syrah, Yakima Valley. Uh, this is from uh, Elephant Mountain Vineyard, which a lot of uh, people have been using that vineyard quite a bit. And I know Josh uh, Maloney used Elephant Mountain for one of his cabs. I really like that cab. Again, 28 bucks. Let's give this a little rinse. I met Kevin White. Good guy. Nice man. Very serious about his wines. And got good press right out of the bat. He started out, this always bums me out. He started out about, I think, 24 bucks, 25, I think 24, maybe even 22. So this is 100% Syrah. I don't know if he puts a little Viognier in it or not. He might. Again, it rolls in at 28 bucks. Let me do that over there. Let's see what we get on the notes. Oh. You know, charcoal, bacon fat, smoke, tobacco. A little bit of a leather action going on. Getting a little bit of uh, like uh, roasted blueberries. That little click, click, click you hear? That's Zora by my sister's. Chihuahua, who comes, um, get a little stink action too, I'm liking the nose on this, absolutely, um, a little bit meaty even, which you look for in a Syrah, I was really excited to try these, because 14 is such a great vintage, and I'm excited to try them, let's see what we get on the palate.
that's a big, powerful Syrah, but it stays in check. It keeps its balance. It doesn't get over the top. It stays right in that nice area. It has fruit, yes, but it has a lot of other interesting things goes on. It has spice, it has bark, it has tobacco, it has a little bit of leather, it has smoke, it has blueberries, it has a little bit of, I'm even getting a little black raspberry on it. The blueberries really hit right at the back of the mid palate into the finish. Good balance. This has good balance. It has good acidity, but it certainly is not a prominent part of the wine, but you get that underneath. It gets a little bit fresh on the back end. What you're looking for in wines that you want to age. I'm, I'm gonna say, this is a B minus to me right now. I would like to try it in another year, see how it evolves. Uh, this one, on the other hand, is showing its stuff right out of the door. It's like, I'm a good Syrah, and I'm letting you know it. Good stuff, good balance, good fruit, good complexity, uh, nice layers, everything's there. Nice smoky, a little bit of meat action going on, a little bit of red flowers. There's a lot going on with that Syrah. I'm going to go A on that. I think it's uh, definitely worth 28 bucks. It's definitely a good buy. It will age easily five to, five to eight years. I would go five years. I'd open another bottle and think it's going to evolve nicely. Maybe I'll get a couple more episodes in before the end of Washington Wine Month in August 2016. We'll see, I'll give it my best shot. And you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos and let me know what you think I should do for episode 300. You keep watching and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.